So for today's topic, I'm going to be covering a pretty touchy subject, and that is why you are allowing people to reject you in your life. Whether you're someone who is manifesting a relationship with a specific person, or you're manifesting a job or a promotion or a move or a reconciliation with an old friend or something like that. Um, because we are conscious creators here on this channel and this community, I do believe that that rejection is something, whether intentionally or not, that you are allowing. So I know this may be a really touchy subject for a lot of people. If you've watched any of my videos, like if this is not your first time watching you know, one of my videos, you know I will approach this subject with a lot of tact and a lot of empathy. Um, but whenever someone is asking themselves or asking the universe, why is this person rejecting me? And I hold a mirror up to your face. It can be a really hard conversation. So I want you guys to know that there's no judgment here. I am someone who I have been rejected throughout my life in many situations. And, you know, so I understand and empathize with where you are and how you're feeling. So there's no judgment here. There's no tough love. There's just a lot of love and understanding and hopefully guidance to get you on a better path. So let's jump in. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Mary and I'm so happy to have you here for today's video where I'm going to be talking all about how you're like how the the ways that you are again, intentionally or unintentionally allowing rejection in your life. And I'll probably like, sorry, you got a glimpse of my knee. I was just getting comfortable there. But um, I'll probably, you know, kind of approach this subject through the lens of manifesting a relationship with a specific person. But just so you know, the advice that I'm giving you now applies to anyone really. So I learned back when I was getting my undergrad, um, about this idea of locus of control and how everyone has, oh, sorry, it's self-care Sunday, so I'm doing a face mask. This is the face mask that I'm doing. It's the Pixie vitamin C remedy mask. Whoops, forgot I had that. Wash my face for this and everything. I'm gonna put it on while I talk to you guys. Um, but when I was getting my undergrad, I learned about this topic called locus of control and how everyone has either an internal or an external locus of control. The type of locus of control you have probably depends on who you are as a person, like your personality, your upbringing, you know, things that you've been through, just, you know, just the kind of, just the kind of person that you are. But locus of control, put very simply, means whenever things happen in your life, good or bad, you either think that, well, it is, either in full or in part due to yourself, decisions you've made that brought you here, you know, things like that, or you believe it's everyone's fault but your own. So an internal locus of control, external locus of control. I'm definitely, for obvious reasons, an internal locus of control kind of gal. And I'm guessing if you're someone who believes in manifestation, that you are as well, that you realize that whether by your choices or your energy or both, Things in your life are unfolding because of choices that you've made. So what's problematic is that, you know, we're kind of decided we're either this or that. And what I have seen from family members, from friends, from people that I coach is that often it's not that black and white. It's not you're either an internal locus of control gal, you know, guy or gal, or you're an external locus of control guy or gal. A lot of what I see is that we're internal locus of control, meaning I'm responsible for what happens in my life when things are going right. And we're external locus of control when things are going wrong, right? So when things are going right, when we get the job, when we get the guy or gal, when we get the awesome apartment or the brand new house or the brand new car, it's because I worked hard or I said these affirmations or I got this degree or I sent in my application or whatever, right? I talked to that hottie at the bar and now we're getting married. Like, you know, so people give themselves credit where it's due and that's awesome because you're right. All of those things are because of you. But inversely, when things are not unfolding the way that we want, 
we go, oh my God, it's because he can't see what's right in front of him. Oh geez, because they don't know a good thing when they got it. Oh, it's because this person cut me off in traffic. There've been a couple times in my life where like I've almost been in a car accident and technically it would have been the other person's fault, but I was late for work and admittedly speeding right? Which is like, I would have been, you know, a hundred yards back that way going far slower if I hadn't been driving like an idiot because I left work. But I had an external locus of control of, oh my God, that guy almost hit me. Oh, that idiot. She ran that light, right? But there was also some fault with myself, right? I'm giving you guys very tangible real world examples, but this also applies to manifestation because let's talk about it. So there's this concept in the world of manifestation that everyone is you pushed out. And that does not mean that every single person walking this planet is a one for one clone of you. Essentially what it means is that the people in our lives show up how we expect them to. They show up based on the rules that we set for our universe, good, bad, or indifferent. So if you are an overly pessimistic person, pessimistic, pessimistic person in general, chances are you're going to have people showing up in your life negatively. Right? If you are always a glass half empty kind of guy or gal, you're going to have people showing up in your life negatively because manifestation is non-selective. Okay, You cannot be someone who exists in a constant state of lack, energy, negativity, and then say positive affirmations for one specific thing and expect everything to fall into place perfectly. Right, You're setting rules with your thoughts and your energy and your emotions and your actions. You're setting rules in your universe and then you're surprised and you play the victim when people abide by those rules. Okay, and I'm not like attacking anyone, you guys, because I've done it too, but that's why I'm trying to help you through this. So you can look in the mirror and go, shit, yeah, I did do that. Okay, let me not make that mistake again, right? Because our mistakes mean nothing if we do not learn from them. We're human. We're going to make mistakes, okay? We're, we're, we're bumbling around through life, you know, like drunk toddlers just falling into stuff. And, you know, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to screw up. But it means nothing. It means it was all for nothing if you don't learn from it. So I've learned from my mistakes. I'm, I'm trying to teach you guys from my mistakes. I'm also trying to bring you to a place where you'll learn from yours. So if everyone is you pushed out, Okay, if everyone is showing up based on the rules that you set for your life, if you are setting rules in your life where you are a victim, then guess what? You People must put you in a situation to play the victim. And they, whether it's in their nature or not, whether they want to or not, must play the villain. Because where there's a victim, there's a villain. Maybe it's the boss who fired you. Maybe it's the friend who stabbed you in the back. Maybe it's the SP who rejected you. Okay, they must play the villain because you've set rules where you are the victim. Okay, so if you are someone who lives in a constant state of fear of having your heart broken, you are at high risk of having your heart broken. I have friends, I have friends who right, wrong or indifferent, they've never been dumped. They've never been cheated on. They're just walking through life blissfully unaware that their hearts could easily be broken. Right, every relationship they were in that ever ended, it just kind of like, oh, it kind of faded out. Yeah, we decided it was in the best interest of both of us. Like, there was no, like, they're not the narcissist who's breaking people's hearts. Like, any relationship they were ever in that ended, it was like mutually beneficial. They're like, yeah, it just didn't work out. Off we go, right? There are people who, and I'm sure that you guys know of them, people who, like, it's the, like, the lucky girl syndrome, right? Who are just walking through life with this charmed freaking life. And the reason they have that life is because they believe that that's what life must be and therefore it is. You can also adopt that same mindset. Now, here's the thing. Some of you guys are gonna watch this video and you're gonna feel really motivated. And you're going, you know what? I'm sick of playing the victim and I'm gonna make a change. And from now on, there are no more villains in my story, right? And then tomorrow someone cuts you off in traffic or tomorrow your boss puts you on a performance improvement plan or tomorrow you text your best friend and she just doesn't respond for the whole day. And you're like, what the hell? I said, I'm not the victim anymore. You guys, sometimes in manifestation, there's a time delay. Okay. I know it. You know it. And we allow that time delay to deter us from taking that first step. Okay. It's like, it's like people who run marathons. You're running 26.2 miles when you run a marathon. Okay. And when they're like, they're like in the first, you know, half a mile. 
and they're like seeing this path ahead of them, they don't go, oh man, I'm not at the finish line yet. It must not be working. I must not be going anywhere. I must not be making progress towards my goal. No, they know it's right ahead. You just have to keep working towards it. So a lot of you guys fail yourselves. You quit yourselves before you even give your manifestation, before you even give this new mindset a chance to unfold. And that's another area where I want you to really stop failing yourself. It's like you're the villain and the victim in your own story, okay? So knowing that everyone is you pushed out, start holding yourself accountable to your mental diet. When I talk about mental diet on this channel, I'm not talking about I'm constantly affirming 24 seven in my brain. I'm talking about my thoughts are aligned with my manifestation. My thoughts are in a place of positivity. Okay, again, not 24 seven. This is not a toxic positive channel. There aren't, you know, like I'm not like I never have a bad day, but I try to keep my thoughts, my energy, my beliefs, my emotion in a place of positivity and abundance so that Positive things can manifest in my life in abundance, whether I'm manifesting specific goals or just like, hey, whatever good shit wants to find me, come my way. It's much easier for that to happen because everyone is me pushed out. Additionally, what you focus on persists. And that's pretty much the same thing as everyone is you pushed out in a roundabout kind of way when we're talking about people. So if you are only focusing on bad things, guess what? You are only going to manifest bad freaking things. So when people are rejecting you in your life, it's because you're allowing them to. Even if you don't want them to be, you're still allowing them to because people are abiding by the rules that you've set for your universe. So if your universe says, you got to break my heart, you got to reject me, I have daddy issues, abandonment issues, fear of walking away, oh, that means you got to abide by that rule right? Then they must walk away. I mean, that's what happened to me. That's how I got dumped two times before finally pulling my head out of my ass, working on my self-concept, addressing my issues and manifesting my happily ever after, right? Because I finally had this moment where I was like, oh, he's reflecting me, right? Oh, he's reflecting me. There it is. So this is really about, sorry if I look a little choked up, so I just choked on my water. This is really about realizing that I don't have to be the victim. I don't have to have this external locus of control. What I always like to tell people is whenever we realize everyone is you pushed out and you really are manifesting the things around you, the things in your life, the people in your orbit and how they're acting, whenever we realize this and we accept it, there's this big epiphany where throughout your whole life, it feels like you're a little tumbleweed getting just tossed around in the wilderness by the wind. And then one day you wake up and you realize that you are the wind. You are the one in control. You are the one setting your direction and your pace and your obstacles, your challenges, or how easy it is, right? You're the one who determines that. So I'd love for you guys to, one, believe in yourself. Two, find that motivation to go, you know what? It's almost like you're like making a declaration to yourself, to your higher self, to the universe of, I'm no longer going to be the victim of my own story. I'm no longer going to be this sad little tumbleweed getting tossed around. I'm no longer going to exist in a state where I have this external locus of control. And I think everything bad that has happened was completely out of my hands. Because you can't have it both ways. You can't believe I'm a master manifester. I'm the god of my existence. But if something bad happens, whoops, that wasn't me right? You have to get real with yourself. So if you are in a situation where someone is rejecting you, it's because whether with your intention or with your energy, you are allowing it to happen and you don't have to. So take your power back, make that declaration of I am in control. I am not a victim. There doesn't have to be villains in my story. I can live this charmed life. I can be a lucky girl or a lucky guy, right? And it really can be that simple, okay? If you found this video helpful, motivating, challenging, right? Please let me know in the comments, take that first step towards accountability of, hey, yeah, this is me, but I know it doesn't have to be, and I'm no longer going to allow it to be. And if you see comments in the down below in the comments where people are saying that of, hey, I realize this is me, I've decided I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to take accountability. I am, here's what I'm going to do to change my mental diet. Here's my first step. Make sure you're going and replying and supporting each other. What I love about this community is there's 
so much support in the comments. There's so much just loving, nurturing energy that you guys are exchanging constantly. And I want to see that like hyping each other up, hype, having that support. And I promise if I have time, I'm going to go in and I'll respond to all the comments. Time has been a tricky thing for me lately. That's why I haven't had a Friday video out in the last like three weeks, trying to get some of my time back. <laughs> acknowledging it's 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 completely my fault internal locus of control but i'm hoping that in the next week i'll be able to kind of get back to normal with how much i'm posting community posts shorts and replies to your comments so thank you so much for joining and i will look forward to seeing the next video bye friends